I am a freelance developer, and uh, like every other, a lot of WordPress developers got their start kind of bootstrapping their skills in business, learning on their own. I don't have a degree in software engineering, and uh, I've learned as I've gone along. Yes, I've taken courses, I've uh, done a lot of client work and learned along the way, uh, and I'm continually learning, and I really enjoy learning. But I find it very difficult to communicate my value as a developer. Uh, it's a bit different than perhaps a designer, you know, with a nice portfolio, beautiful pictures, something that you can easily wow and woo a client. But how do you communicate the value of your code as a developer? How do you communicate hey, I'm the one you want to hire as opposed to that person over there. And so I'm going to try to keep this kind of brief because it is 2 o'clock on Sunday and uh, it's hot in here. <laughs> but I'd also like to hear from your perspectives as well uh, if you have any and you want to contribute. So um, I'd like to tell you a story of the devalued developer. And so this happened to me years and years ago. I was pretty proficient in my skills working with WordPress. Comfortable in PHP, comfortable, you know, writing a plugin, you know, custom themes. Pretty excited about that stuff. I had a client I was really excited about, and uh, we had some problems with their site. I, you know, opened up the theme obviously, and as a developer, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, they're not doing anything the WordPress way. They're not doing anything like and queuing their scripts correctly. Maybe there's some hard-coded uh, menus in there. The kind of stuff that you see that you want to address, you know, and you make known to your client. We fixed that problem. And this was before uh, WordPress menus, before 3.0. And, you know, they had like this hard-coded menu. And then uh, I upgraded their WordPress uh, site and then put in the menu and made it, you know, so they can edit it and everything. They were really excited. You know, they were super excited. Um, they had some more work to do. They wanted a landing page, you know, that was very promotional, very marketing. It had a video. And we kind of, I sat down with them and went over the most important parts of their business. And we identified, you know, the things that they wanted to communicate to their crowd, um, their main audience. And we put up this landing page, and they were really excited. And so they were like, you know, we're getting ready for this big, new site that we want to do. And I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be great. Custom theming, you know, this is what I want. Because I had this like kind of mangled, you know, marketplace theme that they were working with. And um, so I, they were like, yeah, just let me know how it's going to be, and uh, like how much it's going to be. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll just uh, give you a price. And so I talked to a designer, like a local designer in my town, and came up with an estimate. And I gave him some number. I can't remember what it was. It might have been like $5,000 something like that. You know, I was excited to get any kind of work. And I had other client work as well, but I was, you know, growing my own business as a freelancer. And uh, never heard from him again. So I was like, what, you know, what did, they were so happy, like, what did I do? You know, and so that, that like, if you're someone like me, you, you wonder about those things because it applies to your business, you know? You're, you're, what did I do wrong as a business person? And, uh, so there were a couple things that I didn't do. And so I'd like to talk about some of those things. Uh, and see, these are some things that have worked for me. So clearly defining everything that you do. Remember where I said that I sat down with them and talked about the things uh, that were important in their business, their key audience, and doing all? I didn't communicate that those are the skills and things that I do as my business. I'm just a developer, right? I just write code. Hire me to do that. But turns out I was uh, not charging for a lot of the things that I was doing. And so uh, what happened was a, while, a long while went by, and I get a call from a, a fellow uh, web shop in town. Really great people. Love them. And uh, they were like, hey, can you help us with this project? 
<laughs> and I was like, sure, because they knew that I knew WordPress very well, right? They, you know, and uh, I was like, okay, so, you know, and they pointed me to the site, and it was my old client. They already had a new site, and like, uh, you know, little sniffer that I am, I opened up the inspector tools and found out what theme they were using, very popular marketplace theme from a very popular theme marketplace. <laughs> and um, so I was like, yeah, sure, you know. Okay, but it still just drove me nuts. Like, why did they, why did they abandon? I mean, I'm like the WordPress guy, right? You know? And then they just hired someone to buy a marketplace theme and install it for them. So was it, was it, was it the changing market of, you know, uh, services? Or was it me? Like, what is going on here? So explaining your skill set, you know? Do you sit down with your clients in the beginning and kind of map out what's going to happen with their new site? Do you even ask them why they need a new site? A lot of times clients come to us and they're like, you know, we want to do this, this, and this, you know, but are you providing some value, some business consulting? You know, you're the liaison between that, their business and the internet, you know, and you should be there to serve them. Is that part of your services? I wasn't defining that. Um, I also wasn't defining that, hey, you know, I'd, maybe I uh, follow the WordPress coding standards. What does that mean, you know? Um, I hired a consultant, uh, you know, this was years later, but I hired a consultant. His name is Matt Medeiros, maybe you've heard of him. Um, and he just kind of laid out, I, he was like, go through a typical project with me. And I was like, okay. And uh, I had all these things I wasn't charging for and wasn't laying out in any proposals. So what happened, here, let's go to the next slide. So here's the story of the value developer. I had, this is years later, um, I've had plenty of successful projects. I had someone approach me and um, it was an kind of an enterprise uh, level client, on, in my book at least. Uh, and they had a pretty high budget for web development. I was like, great, this is awesome. And so uh, I was like, what do I do? Okay, you've got these, I, I'm a developer and I've got these sites that I do for maybe like, you know, five to eight thousand dollars. And then uh, here's this site for like thirty thousand dollars. How do I make that jump and how do I justify it? So we laid out everything that I wasn't doing basically, but that I, that I wasn't writing down, I wasn't clearly defining. And um, it was a lot of stuff. So I wasn't really communicating the value that I'm going to provide to them. Not only um, my skills, like I followed the WordPress coding standards, or um, I am going to sit and do information architecture, help map out their site. There's staging and deployment, maintenance. I was just giving them a number. I was just dropping a number on some people, being like, oh, it'll cost you this much kind of trying to do the value-based pricing without like reading much into it and really having a methodology for it. <laughs> so, um, so clearly defining what you do is very important. And, you know, as a programmer, as someone who writes code, it's, it's hard to do that. So you, you can't communicate the value through code. You can to some extent, but to your clients, it's gonna, you're going to end up sounding like this guy, a space robot, okay? <laughs> I use Gulp as a task manager. All the assets will be concatenated and minified. Aren't you excited? Your site's going to load so much faster with fewer HTTP requests. You know, I've seen developers talk to clients like this. <laughs> and they're like, oh, man, this is like some, they're gonna, I'm going to woo them with my technical know-how, and then they'll hire me, you know? <laughs> Whereas um, they might be like, oh, this guy's, you know, I don't know what's going on. It's confusing. There's this other price over here. Uh, you know, let's just go over here. This, that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so there's another thing that I think is very important to communicating your value as a developer, and that is passion. If you're passionate about what you do, if you're passionate about making a business more profitable, about providing good services to your client, making, building them a solid platform on which they can build their business, you're going to succeed. And that's also going to communicate to the person. If I walk into a meeting without any passion whatsoever, and I'm sitting there like, 
Yeah, but that's going to be harder because we have to build a custom plugin and it's going to take so much time. You know, that, that's going to communicate this is a chore, he doesn't care. You know, but if I'm passionate about it, you know, it's going to communicate and people are going to say, hey, this person really cares about my business as well. They're providing that value. You know, they have a stake in it as well. And that's something that speaks. The next thing is being completely honest about what you do. Um, and this is super important. I don't want to come to a client and say, you know, I'm this like full stack developer. I do all this. Yeah, I know, I know Rails and, you know, I knew, you know, if you're a freelance WordPress developer, you know, a lot of times we are also, you know, we're, we're learning PHP at the same time. You know, we're, we've learned HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Maybe we're taking classes and you can get really, really, really good at doing those things. It takes a lot of time, but I'm, be honest about your skill set. Um, if you're, you know, this, this comes to, you know, are you a WordPress, are you a developer or are you a WordPress implementer? And um, this kind of goes full circle to that first story that I told because the, the web shop that took that job, that took my client that I like so much, they were implementing WordPress. They were buying a theme, installing it, grabbing a bunch of plugins, installing them. And then when they had trouble with that, they asked me for help. So I don't know whether or not they were saying they were doing development, but it's very important to be honest about what you do. If you're just installing themes and plugins, say it. I mean, that has a lot of value too. There's nothing wrong with being a WordPress implementer. But if you're a developer, sell your skills as they are. You know, you're, you're proficient, you're comfortable writing plugins, custom plugins for clients. You're comfortable doing custom themes, and that's what you specialize in. You can also troubleshoot a lot of those pain points of, that come from sometimes people who implement. You know, they're, the implementers are very comfortable, perhaps, with HTML and CSS. Um, maybe PHP snippets, they'll drop in the functions file. It works, really know why. Um, but if you can put together a site like that for your client, be honest about it, you know? And I found that being honest about your skills helps communicate the value you're gonna provide. Um, price appropriately. Uh, something I wasn't doing either. <laughs> uh, you know, all those things, those clearly defined things that I was doing, they, they have their value. Um, taking time and understanding WordPress coding standards has a lot of value. Why? Well, if I'm following these standards and I create a solid plugin, it's going to make maintaining that a lot easier for people down the road. It's going to make it a lot easier for my client because they're not going to have to spend money and time fixing a poorly created solution for their website. You know, if uh, I've spent so much of my time fixing problems with uh, websites that were pieced together, you know, and so that has a lot of value. If you are trying to build a solid solution, communicate that and price appropriately. You know, those things really do have their price. Um, so I'd really like to hear from y'all, if you uh, feel inclined, from a client perspective on uh, developers, or from a developer's perspective, how you communicate value to your clients. Does anyone want to have anything to say?
somebody else. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just so it, some of it has seemed impossible to define for everybody. Yeah. Why They may not have really been aware of it, you know, that maybe they were just shooting for a lower price because they couldn't afford it. But they had to, but whoever they were working with had to come back at some point and fix a problem that was there. So it did cost money, you know, in the end. And that's the, that's the thing you have to communicate, you know, if how solid can you build a solution. But going back to what you were saying also is that, you have like a friendly relationship a lot of times. And that also, to me, to me, maybe that also means, hey, maybe I'm great to work with also. That has a lot of value, doesn't it? You know? Yeah, that's it. I'll tell them I'm funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> sure, you know? Um, but, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, I saw like two categories. You had the WordPress implementer and then the developer. And, and I, I, I think in your mind, you have two different distinctions there. I find like there's tiers of developers more than that. I feel like I've met developers that don't even know how to do a child theme and just customize within the theme options. I'm like, ooh, you can call yourself a developer? Wow. But, and I would consider those implementers. But then there's like the WordPress developers that do more interface design and just to make it look pretty, like do CSS and child themes. And then there's the advanced programmers that I call like you. And, um, and when we really need I wouldn't say it's necessary to build, you know, those those sites that other people can't really afford, you know, the full scale Ferrari kind of deal. So that's just my take on it. Um, that's that's really that's that's very valuable because value. exactly, you know, and that's the kind of thing as a developer, when you price appropriately, you'll price out a lot of the people that can't afford you, but you'll be doing projects that you really mm -hmm. enjoy doing. You'll be doing things uh, that you want to be doing. You won't be kind of like, oh, i got to fix another thing. You might be doing those solid solutions, and you might be at a higher price point, uh, you know, because you've finally appropriately communicated the value you provide. You uh, match your value with your customer's value, or they match with you. And I think that's what we as developers have to find our proper clients for, find out which ones we would serve well. Right. And it must, I mean... It's got to be hard finding a good developer yeah. um, that'll be at that, you know, at that level. So I'm more of an implementer. Mm -hmm. um, I can troubleshoot and do some of the stuff and fix some code, but I can't write the code myself from mm -hmm. scratch. One of the troubles that I find, or the challenges I find with clients, is they don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. Right. So what terminology do you use to help pull the people? I mean. If I use developer, they're looking for designers. I'm not necessarily, and they don't really know what they're looking for mm -hmm. or what they need. Mm -hmm. So how do you find that middle ground? Wow, that's a good question. You know, a lot of, uh, for your clients, yeah. Um, There's at least five different terms, at least. Well, you know, I would say as an implementer, my suggestion is as an implementer, you also have a major responsibility to understand what's going on in the WordPress community. You're here, thumbs up, you know. You're doing the right thing. You're at a WordCamp, you're here to learn, and you're doing the right thing. So I think implementing is, is something that is very, very common. It's uh, a lot of people built great businesses on it, you know. Um, but there will be a time when you need to hire a developer when something could come up. You know, and looking for those skills, uh, you know, find out if the developer, you know, follows coding standards. Find out, you know, if they've built plugins. How comfortable that are they with PHP? If they're not comfortable with PHP, it could be it could be a really big problem. And I understand that part of it. I'm the challenge is how do you get to the clients when they're they don't know what they're looking for and they're putting in the Google search term is developer because someone told them they need a developer when they don't necessarily need a developer yet. I can I can speak to some of that and how you might filter out some of it, but I know exactly what you're saying and I don't have the end all be all of all businesses by choice. I tend to be more of an implementer, but I have heavy, solid, murky 
the communication strategy behind it. But because talking to somebody about this yesterday, and I don't know if it's a big Ziggler thing or whatever, but you have to um, sell them what they want. So you may have to use terminology like on my website. I don't even know what I am. I'm a designer, I'm a developer, whatever. I don't mean to be dishonest, and I am honest about my skill set, but they don't even get that. So there's a little bit of education going on there, but you need you need those terms, yes, for search-wise, but what, what I'm finding is there's so much out there that is, is um, if you're looking at search traffic for your clients, you're really gonna struggle with that because there's so much out there that for that kind of person, they're not even gonna look at you unless you're charging $300 or, or something like that. So I can't appeal to that. I'm, I'm appealing by word of mouth, and I had a client tell somebody uh, last week that asked why I charge what I charge. She looks at this person that questioned her about it, at knowing she was working with me, and she said, you don't even know what you don't know. I still, I haven't found a way to articulate that yet, but it's again, you, you're selling them what they think they want, and you know, my, my price captures my value, and by the end of the process, hopefully they get the difference, but. Mm -hmm. Any developers in the room? Well, but I'll say something to what Bill said. Sorry. I was going to say your part about explaining exactly what you do is part of educating. I'm a graphic designer who does mostly print and stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm coming in, but you still have to take software. Mm -hmm. I'm like, can I do this as a publisher and do blah, blah, blah? I'm like, we're going to talk to you. So it's the same thing. Um, <coughs> um, you have to try to educate them and break it down. My thought, I like your part about clearly defining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had when I had that uh, a large when I had a large project come to me, I I defined everything I would be doing for the project. I wasn't a super nine-page proposal or anything, but instead of just kind of like <clears throat> really nonchalantly shooting off uh, a price point, I defined what I'd be doing and I defined what standards I would be following, um, and they saw the value in that. You know, I'd be working through them with information architecture, content strategy. And everything they wanted me there on the table. So, um, any developer doesn't really give you some magic bullet of being able to get a job for somebody because your client doesn't really care if you're just an end client business owner. All, everybody's just a consultant and they just want somebody to solve their problem. So, mm -hmm. if you can establish your ability to solve somebody's problem, if you're the implementer and you coordinate other solutions, they need to find. If you're the developer, you still got to coordinate the solutions. So, it's not, it doesn't really matter. Exactly, and a lot, you know, a lot of times the implementer and the developer work together, you know, on on finding those solutions. It's very common, you know. A lot of a lot of implementers, you know, they're doing a lot of stuff on the admin side of the site, you know, they're they're communicating with the client. A lot of times, developers don't want to be doing that, you know. It's different for someone like me as a freelance developer because I communicate a lot with my clients. But some developers are kind of more on the behind the scenes with agency work, you know. Maybe not behind the scenes so much, but the implementer is kind of communicating what they need as far as uh, functionality and the developers, you know, putting that forth. As a freelance developer, uh, I sell myself more to the agency mm -hmm. side, uh, but when it comes to selling to the client, uh, I try to do a thorough discovery process and find out like what their goals are, like what's what is the end goal, and try to you know define my proposal around. They're going to make money from this thing. Mm -hmm. Because I've found over the years that clients don't care whether I create the keyword fast or not. You know, am I going to make money from this contact form? Am I going to make money from this e commerce store? Uh, so I try to define a proposal around that value when it comes to end clients, but when it comes to the agency side, uh, that's where you get more techie and good hedge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found that uh, communicating that technicality to the client has to be done in a very specific way. Like performance, you know, if you think about web performance, right, how fast does your site load? That can have a huge return on your client, for your client, as far as the value goes. You know, maybe that means one more person going to the checkout and, and putting in their credit card information because it didn't take them, you know, five minutes to load or something like that. So there's that communicative value too. And you're, if you say, I'm going to spend, you know, 
this much effort on performance, then that has that added value as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I, you know, a lot of times I'm dealing with agencies, so I'm in a very similar position. But I, I do have some clients I've retained over the year. And it's, it's been interesting watching my communication with them evolve, you know. At first, I, I get real techie, and I want to talk to them techie. But you just can't do that, you know. All right, so our challenge is we had one, um, one day they were flying. They were a potential client. Um, we talked to them. They built the site elsewhere. Um, it looks great. Technically, it's a disaster. Um, one, I don't even know. I'd like to help them because you know, they built a new new URL and put the old one in an iframe over it. Just weird. <laughs> like, I don't want to tell them, like, ha-ha, you could have used us. But, but it's more articulating that ahead of time. Like, yeah. We won't screw up, but I'm sure the other guy that might is going to say, we won't screw up either. You know, our, our challenge is proving that we know, you know, we try to articulate that to them. That's, that's our biggest challenge. Yeah, it's yeah, it's we all. Screw up and they won't screw up, and they're half the price. So, you know, and then they do. So. Yeah, and I think that the, I think if I've just had luck communicating, you know, clearly defining everything I'm going to be doing, and in that communication, uh, talking about you know following some best practices within WordPress, um, and maybe simply writing out what those are, um, and perhaps that the other you know, shop that put it together and kind of piecemealed it. Maybe they didn't do that. And that might communicate to the client, you know, oh, they're going to do this, you know, follow best practices and standards and that sort of thing. And they wrote out why. Well, maybe it's worth that price, you know. And if you say, hey, this is going to help you down the road with maintainability and updates and all that kind of stuff, that has a lot of value. Yeah, you know, a common, a common, that the scalability is, I mean, it's kind of a cliche term, sure, but, you know, a common thing that I don't see as much as I used to was the very popular, you know, in queuing your own library, uh, jQuery library and a plugin or theme. And, you know, I just spent so much time fixing that problem. Um, and that problem costs money to the client, you know? So having a solid, you know, following best, following best practices and having a solid solution goes a long way, and communicating that. Uh. From the client side, you have worked with a lot of implementers, designers, developers, yada, yada. If you can show them, and you can quantify it, it's much more meaningful. You know, if you talk about, um, you know, my code will load your code <clears throat> faster. Mm -hmm. We have a graphic that shows know, half a page loaded and the far, this far advanced, mm -hmm. and somebody hitting the back button, you know, or the, the site loaded in two seconds and sort of Google, you know, indexed you high, mm -hmm. or someone abandoned their shopping cart and someone else made a purchase. If you can show them why and you can quantify it, you know, two seconds versus 24 seconds gets you this. It's much more meaningful than telling them you're great at PHP. Absolutely. I think that's really that's a really great insight because uh, 
something like performance is, you know, that's a metric that we can use. That's measurable. Um, and a picture is worth a whole lot of techno speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I was just going to say I've been listening to a lot of value based podcasts recently, and one of the things that they, they say is the more you can position yourself in the conversation in your services as an investment and not as an expense. So, how much some of those examples and stories and case studies that you shared, how much more will those add to the overall value of their business, the longevity of their website, and some of those kinds of things that are more of a long term investment and not just a short term expense that could be decreased to as little as possible? That made me think about the passion part. Because if I'm passionate about helping out your business in the long term, it's an investment. If, I, if I'm really excited about, you know, helping your business turn profits, and I'm, and I'm going to be there for the long haul, then we're, we're both really making an investment together, you know? So, anybody else? Uh, I think a lot of it is the conversation, you know, because uh, I had somebody call me a couple months ago and say, I just was wondering if, you know, if I could hire you for like five hours a month just, you know, when I have a question, like, to answer a question or if I have a thing that I want to do, like, you could implement this little thing. But we had a whole hour-long conversation about what wasn't working for her and, <coughs> and hearing her story and, you know, ended up out of that, you know, with actually a redesign of her theme to bring it up to standards, you know, with looking at a future, like a phase two implementation of working with custom code types to make certain things that she's doing now so much easier. Mm -hmm. You know, but she's explaining to me like how she does, she has like a, a library page on her site and she's explaining how hard that is and, you know, and, and, and telling me her story about that. And I said, well, you know, this sounds like an opportunity that you might want to consider, you know, what's called a custom code type. And that's what it is. She goes, yes, I want that. Mm -hmm. I need that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just like letting them talk about, I mean, everything. Listening. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes into like, you know, some of the services that you, that you provide. You know, do you help them with their content strategy? But not only that, do you help them with their web architecture? How does their content fit into the architecture of WordPress? Do you know the template hierarchy? how that works, how that's going to be used to leverage their content and use WordPress's uh, data architecture to present their content. It's very, very, very helpful. I think the thing just to add on top of that is, is listening, but not making, not letting your client feel stupid. And it seems very simple, but as soon as you do that, they disengage from you. But if you can take the time to understand where they are and then position your conversation at that point, so much further, and you really can connect with that. Yeah, I think there's, I, you know, there's a lot of developers will, will use a lot of technical uh, know-how to intimidate. It happens, you know, and they'll, that's kind of like a cop-out, really, because it's like saying, okay, I can answer your question really easily by just talking really technical, making you feel stupid, perhaps, and you should just do it this way. When really, what you need to be doing is listening to your client and figuring out the best solution, working together, essentially. That's how you build relationships. Exactly, and that's how you build relationships, and that has a lot of value, yeah. I want to add something. I, I started in radio sales, and I was taught the consultant sale process, where you sit down and you listen to your client about what their needs are, and then you see if, if your skill sets match their needs, and if they do, Exactly what they told you they needed. I have the ability to do e-commerce and whatever. So you're listening to them and then feeding it back. The one thing um, freelance developers and small business people who are trying to do this need to be very aware of is that there are people out there that will sit you down and talk your ear off. And you have to limit that. And you can have an initial conversation. But if somebody's trying to figure out, I want to do a website, how much do you charge? It's like 
going to a home builder and saying, how much is it going to cost me to build a house? Mm -hmm. The first question is, what kind of house do you want to build? Mm -hmm. Well, if you sit down there and have that whole conversation and, and figure out everything they need and build a checklist of what you got to do so you can figure out the pricing, you're going to waste a lot of time with people who have no money. So one of the things that we found is very easy to do is we'll sit down, we'll have an initial conversation, and then we'll say, we will sit down with you and, and build you a detailed checklist and tell you what you need to have in a website. There's a fee for this, but then you can take this checklist if you don't like our price, and you can shop it to somebody else, and now you know what needs to be in it because, as you know, a quote is not always the same quote depending on where you go because they don't know all the things that you need to have done. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the clients aren't educated enough to know what their needs are. So we'll educate them as to what's possible. They tell us what they need. Then we can give them an accurate quote. Mm -hmm. If they don't like our quote, as a result of paying for our consultation, they have a document they can take and go out and shop on the street. Yeah, I have um, a lot of people approach me and I set up a consultation time uh, for a fee and we kind of map out their problems, see what's going on, going on. And there's a lot of people that don't want to do that. And that's fine. But there's, some, there's a lot of people that do and they're willing to sit down and, and you know, pay for that because they see the value in that. You someone who doesn't know what they want and won't let you help have right. a roadmap because you're never going to know if you've been successful because they don't have any goals. Right. I'm relatively new at this, and the difference, I think, is there are a lot of very small businesses that need implementers. They don't need, nor can they afford, a developer, but nobody, the, the general public doesn't know the difference, or individuals who are providing, quote unquote, web design, being an implementer, they don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. They come to developers when they have big issues, but mm -hmm. don't know what they're doing. They're just using it like you use Photoshop, or like you use Illustrator, or like you use any other uh, tool. Mm -hmm. And they're just making. Any other developers have any? Any developers in the room have any insight to the? And they get paid to have developers. If they have a client and they can meet the needs with a theme and some plugins and a little bit of modification, they do it. And if not, then during that consultation fee period, they explain that this is going to be a little bit more expensive. I don't think the client ever knows that the site needs the agency. But they outsource parts of the site, sometimes more parts than others, to me or another developer. And that, I think, is a really good solution for some people who are Yeah, that kind of goes a little bit into the honesty thing. Yeah, I agree. You know, I mean, I, I've worked with an agency that openly says we have a handful of developers that we work with. Right. They don't say they're on staff. Right. Um, There's a lot of pictures on people's staff websites. Yeah. Are and, there every day. <laughs> right, you know, and that's, that's fine. And, and that makes sense, you know. If you have, like, a solid group of developers that you can call on, you know. But even... Even as implementers, you need to you need to vet those developers. You need to to see what their skill set is, and um, you know, and, and see how they're communicating that. I would certainly favor it if this agency was more honest about it and said, "We can help you with this. We're going to work with. You know, we're going to bring somebody in who can handle some of that extra functionality." I think that's a more honest approach. But I'm grateful for the work that we do. <laughs> I guess my perspective is I'm not sure all of the customers really even care. I think they just want somebody who knows how to manage the process and get them the end result that they need. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, I think that we've heard that echoed several times, and I think that's, they just want a solid solution, you know. And, and again, you know, I'm, I'm talking about communicating the value as a developer. Sometimes I do that to clients, and sometimes 
you know, that is to, most of the time is to agencies. Uh, but again, you know, those agencies or small time shops, implementers, they also have to find developers. And so, you know, how do I communicate that value as a developer to those people? So, so. if they ask you about design and photography, what happens? I find really great designers <laughs> and really great <laughs> photographers. And then it goes the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is the client wants a website. Mm -hmm. It might come to you first. It might come to the uh, implementer. Mm -hmm. It might come to me, the print designer. Mm -hmm. If I if I can't do the implementation, I'll call somebody that can. Or if they, if they need if they need more, then you call a developer. But they might they might go you first, and you end up with me. Mm -hmm. They might come to me, and I end up with you. Mm -hmm. but, Well, <laughs> it's. That's right. As long as the tile and the piece of space on the floor when the shower is on, and there's value in that. Absolutely. All right, I think we're just going to close it up there. And uh, I really appreciate all of your insight. I um, enjoyed speaking with you, and I enjoyed hearing you. Thank you.